As always, we get straight into it. No need for an intro. So let's go over this trade that I took in crude oil futures. So let's go out to a, or first, you can see, took a lot of attempts to finally get this long. So I've been trying to get longs pretty much the entire day. Took a few attempts, but I eventually got it and final closure was here. So let's get into why I took this trade. So let's go to a daily chart. Let's take the executions off. So within the last 20 days, so from here to here, we are within this range in the last 20 days. So right now we are in a premium. So this is Monday right here, yesterday, this big bullish candle. And I shared in the Discord group that I was bullish going into this week, looking for price to get into these imbalances. We had a very bullish day on Monday, and I was looking for price to reach up into this imbalance today, or at least trade in that direction. So now let's go down to a hourly chart. So what I was looking at was if we look at this entire structure here, so we're looking for price to get into this daily fair value gap, right? So we're really using the range from this high to this low in the last 20 days. So if we look at that range and we try to look at the left side of the curve, so think of this like one big or one big curve. If we look at the left side of the curve and look at where price either consolidated or retraced, we can see that we had a consolidation here, right? So if I put a box on that consolidation, let's make it gray. So we had a consolidation here from the left side of the curve. So I'm expecting price to either retrace back into that and go higher to get into that daily fair value gap. So also as a bonus on this hourly chart, we have this fair value gap here within this consolidation from that left side of the chart. So when price drops down into here, and this is during the 10 o'clock hour, drops down into that hourly fair value gap. So remember what these two black lines are when we go down to a five minute chart. And I'm gonna label the top end of this one. So one, one hour fair value gap high. Now let's drop down to a five minute chart and now let's put the execution arrows on. So I was watching price consolidate. I saw that we made a low just before the hourly fair value gap. So this is the market engineering liquidity right here. So I'm waiting for price to drop lower, taking out this sell side. So now that we've aged this liquidity, they're going to want to offset up here. What do I mean by that? Basically smart money or the people that have a lot more intel than us are going to want to buy here. Why are they buying below this low? Because there are buy stop orders, either people putting their stop losses down here. So people that went long during this run, they're going to put their stop loss here or people that, and my bad, I said buy stop. I meant sell stop orders, but also people that think that this market is going to go lower. So once we take out this low, they want to go short expecting price to continue lower. So there's two functions as to why people will put sell stops here. Just the bottom line is that there's going to be a lot of orders resting here. And remember that in order to go long here, you need to have the same amount of people willing to go short at that same area. So this is where smart money is going to want to buy below this low. Now, when they buy below this low, where are they going to want to start taking partials and close their final positions? Well, above this high up here above this high up here. And then I was hoping for this fair value gap up here. So that was the whole basis of the trade. Now let's go down to a one minute chart. So I'm gonna delete this gray box. Remember that was that consolidation on the hourly chart from the left side of the curve. So what I did on the one minute chart was I measured the range from this high to this low right here. And then I just used the market maker preset. So this is 20 to 30% of that entire range. Remember the best Trees are going to happen within a reclaimed order block or breaker that aligns with 20 to 30 percent of the range. So we have this swing low that we take out right here. So we have these down close candles. That is our reclaimed order block. So that was the reclaimed order block I was using. So in the very first trade, I went long because I measured from this low to this high. Use the optimal trade entry preset, and we can see that. We have this fair value gap, which is in a discount. So I went long inside of this fair value gap, ended up getting stopped out in this candle because my stop loss was below this swing low. So that was the first trade got stopped out in that. And then in the second trade, boom, we have equilibrium here. So all I did was measure from this low and it was actually to this high right here, I think. 
So from this low, this low to this high, measured it. We have equilibrium right here. We stabbed into it on this candle's opening inside this fair value gap. So I went long as soon as we went into that fair value gap, looking for price to start reaching for equilibrium up here, which is the deep premium from this high to this low, 20 to 30% or 70 to 80%, depending on how you're looking at it. It's just a very deep premium. So I'm looking for price to get to equilibrium, deep premium above this high, and then eventually above yesterday's high. But that trade also was a loser. So my stop loss was here. I ended up getting stopped out here. So I had two losers and then I took a third attempt. So once we closed above the reclaimed order block again, measure from high or low to high, and it'll be easier on a 15 second chart to see it. So from this swing low to this high right here, we have equilibrium right here. We have a clear imbalance that is in a discount. So when price drops into it on this candle, I'm going long again. So I'm going long right here, 77.41. Stop loss is right here. The initial target for this one is going to be a two to one, but two to one is just short of equilibrium. So my target was right there for equilibrium for this trade. Now, after we have this entry here, we have this down close candle. So when we close above this down close candle, I'm treating that like a bullish order block. So boom, bullish order block. Let's make that one blue. And then let's find mean threshold, which is 50% of that candle. So mean thresholds here. So this is the range that I'm trying to enter in with within that bullish order block. So now we can drop down to a 15 second chart again, see if we can find another optimal trade entry. So we have this swing low, which is below mean threshold. So measure from this low to this high, use the optimal trade entry again. We have equilibrium right here. So I'm going to enter right here at equilibrium. I don't even need it to touch the order block. Yes, it does, but I don't need it to. So I'm entering right here at 77.50. So you see the buy order for two again, 77.50. Stop loss is going to go right here. Boom. And then the target for this one, I'm looking for a simple two to one. So right there. So I have a target here, but notice how, and so I have a target here, but notice how I went long for two contracts here and then I, pyramided again for two. So I have a total of four contracts in the market as a whole. So what I did was at this first target, I took off two. And then at this second target right here, I took off just one, leaving one of the four contracts remaining to see if we can get a run all the way to that daily fair value gap here. So the risk to reward ratios were two to one for, the both, ent for both entries. But for the runner that I was trying to leave in, so let's do this again. I was basically looking for a crazy risk to reward ratio. So I was looking for a 14 R trade or let's get it right. So 14 R trade is what I was looking for, for the entire runner. Now I didn't full hold. Obviously I took partials, but that was the total R that I was looking at. However, you can see I got out the trade here. So I got out at 78 14. So I ended up only getting 8R out of the trade. So now let's talk about why I ended up closing here, right? So first thing first, let's go to a five minute chart. This trade, so all these trades were taken in a prop firm account or in a trading combine, whatever, in top step. And with top step, you're not allowed to hold trades overnight. So while I do think this level will get hit, I don't think it's going to get hit today. Uh, as we can see, I think it's going to get hit later on in the week. So because of that, I was watching price. And once we took out this high, I wanted to see, are we going to quickly expand to it or are we going to retrace? If we're going to retrace, then we're probably not going to get up into here because of time of day. So this is London close right here, 1145. We're making this high. That is a good amount of range that it may not make later on in the afternoon. So now what I was looking at was we had this gap right here. So this is your new day opening gap. So Monday's closing price and then Tuesday's the hour gap that we have, the Tuesday opening price. So on Monday we close here. On Tuesday we open here. That gap right there. If we were going to expand higher, 
I didn't want to see price close below the gap. So when price closed below the gap right here at 11.55, as soon as we traded back up into it, I wanted to get out of the trade. That is why I got out at 78.14. And in hindsight, we can see that happened. That was a good decision to make because it is 3.30 right now. So we're probably not going to get all the way up here before 4.15, which is when you have to close your trades in top step. So that is one of the downsides to trading the prop firm accounts, the futures market as of right now. There aren't any that I know of where you can hold overnight. So it's all good. We ended up banking majority of the move anyway. It was only one contract, which is $10 per tick. So 14. And then I was looking for, let's see, 62. So how much is that? So that is around 48, right? 48 ticks that I missed out. So $480, not too bad considering how much I banked. The initial trade was entered at. 77.41 so from 77.41 to 14 that's a good amount of range and then like i said before we wrap this up i am expecting price to reach up into that daily fair value gap we have some heavy news coming out later in the week we have cpi we have fomc tomorrow wednesday and then we also have high impact news on thursday and friday so we'll see what the market gives us and i hope you guys found this review insightful and i'll see you guys in the next video.